I bought this desktop craft organizer for thirty dollars. Added a scrap piece of wood and a hinge, and then I used four separate 3D prints to make it into a portable electronics workbench with drawers, locking latch, handle, and rubber feet. I'll show you how I made the 3D prints on today's Filament Friday. So here's the box, pretty much finished. It's got the, the slots, the drawer, the workbench that folds out. The first problem I had is that when this workbench folds out, it lifts the box, it pivots. And that's what I didn't want. So I needed feet to lift this thing up in the air. So I designed these in Tinkercad and I printed them on the Flashforge Dreamer using a cheap inland flexible filament. And it's really not that flexible. These came out, they're rubbery but hard rubber. So they're a little bit harder than I wanted but I'm going to mount these at all four corners. But first let me show you how I design these and then we'll get them mounted. I opened Tinkercad and brought in a cone and then I turned that cone 180 degrees. Now this is too sharp of an angle so I stretched it out and then I brought in a block and tried to center that to, to the cone and then made it into a hole. So the top portion of this is what's going to actually form the foot. So I grouped those two together and then I have my basic foot and I lowered it to the platform and then I adjusted it to the exact sizes I wanted, 20 millimeters high and 30 millimeters in diameter at the biggest portion. So there's the basic foot shape. Now I needed to put a hole in the center of it for a screw. So I took a cylinder, made it four millimeters in diameter, turned it into a hole, put it at the center, and then I aligned it and checked this out. I had it perfectly aligned. How lucky is that? So then I grouped those together and there's my hole for the screw to go through. But I want the screw to be recessed. So I flipped the cone over and I brought in another cylinder and this time it had 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And this is gonna be the recessed portion. So I brought that into the center, made it into a hole, and now I made the foot into a hole so I could see how far down I was going with that second cylinder. And once I got it where I wanted, then I aligned these guys as centered and then I grouped it all together and there was my shape, that was my, my foot. So I exported the .stl file, sliced it, and sent it to the printer. So I used my drill and I put a piece of tape on the drill so it didn't go in too far and I drilled four holes one inch from the edge and now I can mount the feet. I just shot a screw through the center of the foot, it's the way it was designed, and just tighten these guys up. All four feet are installed so let's see if this works. Perfect. No pivoting. And this sits pretty flat. So I, I sized it perfect. So now I need to make drawers in here, a handle on top, and then some kind of latching mechanism here. So let's print, print the drawers next because that'll take a little longer. I designed those in Tinkercad. Let me show you how I did it. The drawers were even easier. I just brought in a block and I sized the block to the outer dimensions I wanted for the drawer. Once I had that set, I made a duplicate of it, raised the duplicate up a little bit, made it into a hole, and then I undersized the duplicate by six millimeters. This way I'll have three millimeter wall all the way around because I'm gonna put this duplicate in the center and group these guys together. So I set all the dimensions so where they were three millimeters less, then I centered it in both directions and then made sure it was flush at the top. So that gave me three millimeters on the bottom and three millimeters all the way around group those together and there was my basic drawer. Now I needed a handle and I just chose to use this round piece, half round piece, and then I downsized it to three millimeters tall. And then I slid that into the front of the box and then I'm gonna just group these guys together. Now what I didn't show here is I actually came back and did another rim on this thing so I'd have a little lip to grab. So it wasn't just flat, but basically this is the drawer. I grouped it together, downloaded it for 3D printing, sliced it, and sent it to the printer. Here's two drawers that were printed on the Flashforge Dreamer using Matter Hackers Pro PLA Gunmetal Gray. And I'll tell you what, this filament prints beautifully. Especially on that machine, these are nice. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. I got just a little bit of warping in this one corner but then I adjusted the bed and this one's not as bad. So I can adjust it a little better. I've been printing a lot of ABS on that. So ABS and PLA require a different setting. But these fit nicely. And I put a little lip on the handle. So even if it's in the bottom, 
even though it's flat, I can still get them out easily. But this way I didn't have to use supports. So these turned out great. I just need to print a whole bunch more. The handle was the next piece that I needed to design. Now the handle I actually measured by wrapping my hand around a ruler and then measuring around it to figure out how tall I wanted, how wide I wanted it, and then I was ready to start designing it and all I did was bring in this wedge shape and then adjusted that wedge because this is where the screws will actually go in and this is actually it's going to set the base for the handle itself that I'm going to actually grab. So I needed to set this to 30 millimeters tall and and then the depth was just, I made it 30 by 30, so it was equal. And then I brought in a block component, and I knew I needed this to be 120 millimeters long for my hand. To, so that fit in between them. So I put that on the wedge, and then 20 millimeters wide was going to be the handle, which worked out perfectly. That's what these blocks are normally. So I reset the grid so I could get a fine tune on this guy and really get these to fit tight. And then once I had that, I was ready to duplicate the angled block or wedge on the end by just making a duplicate and then uh, using the adjust mirror tool to flip it the other way, slide it down to the other end. If you hold the shift key and slide, they automatically stay in line. And then I had my basic handle. But what I didn't like is there wasn't enough support underneath. I wanted like a half round chamfered edge on the inside of this handle. And there really isn't a shape for that in the standard featured set of Tinkercad. So I, a lot of times I just end up making my own here like this. I probably need to do this once and then save it into those custom shapes. Uh, but I just take a block, make it into a hole, and try to position it halfway through this donut shape. And then I take that block, duplicate it, turn it 90 degrees, and then cut it th cut through it a half again. And that way, really, I'm getting like a quarter uh, shape. And this becomes very handy for rounding edges and also forming a fillet. Now, this worked out perfect the dimension wise. I didn't have to reshape it a whole lot, but I grouped these together. And now I could take this piece, position it in the corner of the handle. And let me zoom in and just position this so it just touched, lined up on the edge, and then brought that up. And then I shortened it. I didn't want it sticking out at the end. So I shortened it by 0.2 millimeters 0.1 on the bottom, 0.1 at the top. I took that chamfered edge and I duplicated it and mirrored it and then slid it down to the other end. And I held the shift key so they stayed in line and then just positioned it where I wanted on the other end of the handle. Once I had that, I grouped it all together and I had my basic handle structure. I was really happy with this. But now I needed to put the holes in the ends for the screws that will actually hold this in place. So actually bolts. I'm going to use bolts coming through. So I had to do the same thing I did on the foot where I had to drill a hole and then put a second cylinder to recess for the bolt. So the main hole is all the way through the handle and then I bring in the recessed hole. I made this 10 millimeters, line it up to that first hole, pull it up a little bit and then make the handle into a hollow hole so I could see how deep this thing is, just like I did with the foot. What's different about this handle though is I need one on each side of this handle. I need a hole and recessed hole on both sides. And to line this up with dimensions, you know, that can be a pain in the butt. So what I did, and this is a little trick I use for this stuff all the time, is first to make a duplicate of it, drag it over to the other side so it's close, about where I want it. And then what I do is I group them all together as one group, just the holes. And then I take that group plus the handle and I center the two. So what happens is, is the holes automatically get centered to the center of the handle. So I don't have to worry about dimensions. Now, if dimensions are critical, then you'd have to measure that. But this works perfectly. I have my handle with the recessed holes, and now I'm ready to click on Download for 3D Printing and send, slice it and send it off to the printer. So the handle just came off the Flashforge Dreamer, and now it's printing the locking clip. But this came out more flexible than I actually thought it would be, being PLA. And I probably am going to have to redo this and make this beefier, but I'll try it. What I do like is the size of the holes. The bolts almost screw in place like they're threaded. I'll put a nut on top to make this fit tight, but that's really a nice feature. And I'm putting bolts through this instead of screwing into the wood, so it's coming up through. Because if I screwed into this, over time it would rip right out. But this pinches it between the two. But that caused a problem. The head of the bolt would hit 
when I slide this thing in. So I had to take the bolts and put them on my grinder and grind the head down enough so I could get this in and out. So that worked out really well. So now I just need to mount this guy and then wait for the clip to finish. The clip was probably the easiest piece to make. All I did was bring in a block, stretched it out to 80 millimeters, I left it uh, 20 millimeters wide, I flattened it down to 3 millimeters so this thing would flex, and then I brought in that half round shape again, put it on its side, and this will actually be the, the locking portion of the latch. And I just resized this guy to the depth that I needed based on the dimensions that I measured. And once I had that, this is pretty much the clip. All I needed to do was add two holes for screws. And then group all that together, export it as a .stl file, slice it, and send it to the printer. The final piece is the latch. I was originally going to do this in ABS, but after seeing how flexible the handle was, I realized PLA would probably work fine for this and actually might be a little stiffer. So I drilled two holes, lined this guy up in the center. So now all I need to do is mount this. There we go. Lift it and it comes off. Otherwise it's locked. The portable electronics workbench. So if you like this project, check out some of my other projects over here. Just click on the videos. And if you want to see more behind the scenes details of how I built this, then join us on Patreon. A dollar a month, you get all the behind the scenes and much more detail on the projects. I'm going to do more of that in 2017. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Film of Friday.